Now that the dihedral is set on the wing, it's time to set the washout or wing twist. What that means is on the outboard end of the wings, the outboard portion of the wings, the trailing edge twists up and the leading edge twists down. Now there's pretty good reason for doing that. As I stated earlier, if the wing is flat, perfectly flat and straight, it would be more efficient. And you might think that by decreasing the angle of attack of the outboard section of the wing, that it would lengthen your takeoff roll. And it does to a degree, but the positive effects of it outweigh the negative effects. What happens there is by twisting that leading edge so it is down, or the trailing edge so that it is up, it decreases the lift on that outboard end of the wing, so that when you slow down, as you come to a stall, the inboard section of the wing stalls first, and it gives you some buffeting, and, and the outboard section of the wing stays flying, so you have clean air going over the outboard section of the wing, and over the ailerons so you can maintain aileron control while you're in a stall which helps in recovery and helps prevent spin so that's a pretty important safety aspect and then as i said you might think that it might increase your takeoff run and it probably would i don't know how significant amount it is because there's not a whole lot of twist in the wing out there so it might affect it some you might be more e efficient if the wing was flat or actually the trailing edge was down a little bit so you had more of an angle of incidence out there at takeoff but your stall characteristics and your s slow speed characteristics would diminish a lot of the time in this airplane is spent flying slow and so your inboard section of the wing is going to be close to a stall and you still got plenty of air flowing over the outboard section over the aileron so you have control out there and of course the inboard section you have flaps you put the flaps down that lowers the stall speed some more on the inboard section so you want to keep the outboard section flying while the inboard section is the last thing you want to do is have that outboard section stall first and then you lose control of the airplane go into a spin then pretty easy now another thing is the question of the efficiency of the airplane you think by putting some twist in it it's going to deform that wing a little bit and cause it to slow down in cruise flight but in point of fact it's going to have just exactly the opposite effect by raising the trailing edge of the wing up and lowering effectively lowering the leading edge of the wing you're decreasing the lift on the wing out there on that portion and when you decrease lift you decrease drag so it may actually help in the cruise speed of the airplane it may actually give you a little bit higher cruise speed or higher efficiency at cruise there are actually airplanes out there a mall m7 i don't remember which designation that is but they actually have part of the control system that the ailerons can go up to a negative pitch they actually go up into the airstream a, a little bit instead of trailing behind the wing like you'd normally see them and that decreases lift and increases airspeed and that's a significant increase in airspeed cruise speed on the mall on that particular mall of course it's cruising at quite a bit higher airspeed anyway than the cub so the higher your speed the higher your airspeed the more the drag so the more drag you can get rid of the more efficient it's going to be the more effect it's going to have on it so anyway now we go in and do the wing twist and to do that we have to use the bubble level the little 3 8 inch riser on the one end of the bubble level that i set up for doing the wing and there's no alternative for that there's no other measurements for that well, anyway back to work we'll get that done i've already started on this right wing a little bit made a couple adjustments on it and i'll go tinker with it a little bit more and see what i can do the washout is set i got both wings set pretty close to the same as far as i can tell with that bubble level disconcerting things about that was i went ahead and checked my uh, dihedral and it raised both wings about a sixteenth of an inch so now i've got three and a quarter inches of dihedral on there showing on that i don't know exactly what i need to do about that i think that's too much to take out of there one turn of that i don't know i might might take it out i don't know i'd have to take one turn out of each one of them anyway they're both exactly the same what i got the rear i got the struts all on i went ahead and put the bolts and the nuts in on the wing spars there for the rear struts they need to be torqued down yet but they're in there and i put the bolts in on the front struts there's still hardware to go on there there's still a tie down ring that goes on there oh shoot i messed up okay the tie down ring should have gone on there first before i put the bolts in there so i'll have to redo that but the rear ones are in and the blueprints for the rear struts 
call for an AN5-14 alpha bolt, but this airplane has a modification to the rear struts. I don't know whether it's an Atley Dodge modification or par part of the Whipline 2,000 pound gross weight increase installation, but there's a reinforcement in that rear spar and in that rear strut attach fitting, so it actually takes an AN5-16 bolt. I put a 14 in there at first and Oh my gosh, it's too short. How am I going to get a nut on there? And then I got to checking and remembered that that had that modification to it. Tomorrow I can go ahead and uh, put the jewelry on there on that front strut uh, on outboard section where it fits onto the spar for the aileron control pulley attachment and get it hooked up. Well, that was interesting. I got that tie down ring put on there on both sides. Those have tabs on them that slide up inside the channel on these. Uh, tabs, these mount tabs that come down off the spar. And the only way to get those in there is to take the strut off. I had to take the strut, the bolt out down on the fuselage and take the strut completely off. Slide these up in there. Then I could slide this strut up in this here. And then I had to push and finagle and get that fork down there to go back on that pad down at the bottom. Fortunately it worked out okay. I've been pretty careful about not getting my mess all over the place with the peralcatone and stuff, but now I got it all over the place, so I have to go over everything with the rag and clean up where I don't want it. But I got those two tie down rings in now. Now it's just a matter of hooking up the pulley and stuff and getting that set up for the aileron cable. And then the jury struts and then run the cables, and it ain't over yet. But that's a big. That's a big part right there, getting the wings rigged, getting those struts on and getting the wings rigged. Well, let the airplane sit overnight after adjusting, rigging those wings. I'll let it sit for a while, let everything settle in and see if it would adjust to the twist and stuff like that a little bit more after all the work we did to it. And I checked it again. I got to looking at some of the data information and the sheets that I got had, the information sheet that I had, said those wings to measure them to that string line from the wing spar or the attach fitting there in that area to three and an eighth inches. Well, I found another reference and it said three inches plus or minus an eighth of an inch. Well, anyway, when I got done with everything yesterday, those wings were not quite three and a quarter, a little less than that. So I got to thinking about it and decided to adjust it a little bit. The higher one was that right wing, so I adjusted it back down again. And then I had to adjust the washout, the, the rear strut. Anyway, I got the front struts to, so that they're almost exactly three and an eighth inches uh, almost exactly both of them so they're both exactly the same within 30 second or however close you can get it with a string like that and i've got a, a stainless steel rule a regular machinist rule so it's pretty accurate but uh, anyway those are almost identical and i had to like i said adjust the washout on that right wing and i rechecked all of that and the right wing and the left wing are almost identical of course using the bubble level uh, is not real accurate but anyway they're pretty close uh, that that should be good so i went ahead and hooked up the pulleys and put the bolts in out there on the outboard end of the wing on the outboard end of the struts got those all hooked up and attached so it's time to put the, the uh, jury struts on now, a logical assumption is that the struts hold the wings up, and when the airplane is sitting on the ground, they do hold the wings up. But the real purpose of the struts are to hold the wings down when you're flying. You have all that upward pressure on the wings to lift the airplane all the way out to the outboard end, and without strong struts, those wings would just fold up like a butterfly's wings. So the main structural strength for those struts is in tension and not in compression. They don't hold up near as well to a snow load as what they do to the flight loads. Now those jury struts aren't very big compared to the main struts and they don't really hold much load. They're not really much for load carrying capacity. They're kind of like the the braces or the members you see in a roof truss. They're mainly to hold the struts from bowing. They just take some of the pressure off the struts. They don't really carry any load. They just kind of stabilize the main struts. They're an important feature on there to keep those struts from flopping up and down, much like a web does on a roof truss. So I've got the jury struts mounted up on the right wing. 
and that's kind of like fitting a puzzle together. I've done this one before, I've done these before, I've had those off before to clean them up and to put new hardware in them and stuff, so it's not like doing the wings and, and rigging the wings, that's the first time I've ever done that. So the right wing is done, so now we'll commence to get the left wing done. And once that's done, it can put the fair leads in there on that struts, on the forward struts, and run those aileron cables.